Hi, my name is Dr. Raman Chowdhury, and I'm here with Niti Mehta Shukla, co-founder and head of culture, brand, and ethics at Automation Anywhere. Today, we're talking about trust and ethics in the rapidly changing digital workforce. I am Neeti, and I'm excited to be here, especially to have this fantastic conversation with Dr. Raman Chowdhury. And now you've introduced Ari for what you're calling human bot collaboration. So I've been researching and, and talking about this concept of human in the loop and, and what I call the retrofit human. And, you know, as somebody who works in technology and ethics, one of my fear, and this is where the retrofit human comes in, is we use this language of human in the loop, but really what ends up happening is we expect people to adjust the limitations of the technology rather than creating technology to be beneficial for people. So, so Nithi, where does the human fit into the Automation Anywhere vision? Automation Anywhere was founded um, almost 17 years ago. And right from the get-go, our goal was to um, evolve human possibilities. Technology has only one purpose, and that's human enablement. And so really creating technology, whether it's RPA and artificial intelligence or any other intelligent technology software out there, um, really it's putting the human right in the center of what is possible. Um, how it would help the human, uh, what's the best way for the human to use it, and what's the best way for the human to leverage it to get to that next level of uh, uh, evolution, really, um, in work. How can we build trust capital with automation? Um, but I think Silicon Valley companies um, on the cutting edge of technology um, have really kind of brought that human element into the product roadmap a little bit more, I think, in the last five to ten years than they ever have before. And that's an integral part of it. I mean, look at us, we're discussing ethics and artificial intelligence and making it a mainstream topic. And I think it actually makes for a better product. If you do keep the human right in the front and center of everything you create, um, you know, you, you hit the ball out of the park every single time. Let's say um, a worker who is not a technology worker being faced with increasing automation in their field. How would you talk to them or explain to them about how Automation Anywhere helps them, you know, be, do better at their job or enables them to be improved at their job? Um, there is a little bit of transition, right? Um, it can be in the form of reskilling. It can be uh, positively taken in the sense that a lot of humans or a lot of customers that who have embraced uh, uh, RPA or artificial intelligence into their process workflows, we see that these workers don't want to go back to the old way of doing things. They don't want to go back to spending 30, 40% of their day really not utilizing their best selves. Uh, is how I put it. We were not, you know, we're not here to transfer data between two systems all day long. Uh, we really need to get to a better level of work, strategic work, creative work, innovative work. This is what humans absolutely thrive on and are irreplaceable on. Catalyst technologies like RPA will unleash that in the human workforce. But that's what we hear from our customers, more importantly, that folk don't want to go back to the old way of doing it once they get rid of the repetitive and mundane, which is what intelligent automation is all about. You know, we, we bear the burden of helping reskill, helping keep that human, um, you know, uh, relevant, I guess, in his job and career going forward. Uh, but these technologies are here to help us get to that next level. Uh, I think we should embrace it use it wisely with eyes wide open and have checks and balances so that we're a better society at the end of it. Wonderful. Um, and I really love how you've raised a lot of these issues of human in the loop. Um, and in particular, what, what strikes me is that Ari can get smarter based on user input. So potentially you do have the democratization of AI in the enterprise, which ultimately then creates a better product and a better experience. And I feel like this is this is kind of at the core of, of what you're talking talking about. Would that would that be an accurate depiction? Um, you know, automation has come such a long way because it's no longer, uh, you know, purpose driven by five engineers sitting in a room in some company trying to get a process automated. It really has to be in the hands of every worker. Um, and that's what RE brings, right? It really allows organizations um, to have each employee leverage the systems they have put in place, leverage the automation they have in place um, with checks and balances with security features, uh, but really allowing that every employee can 
maximize his potential and his ability to contribute to that company. I think in, in mainstream business, sometimes there are these like highly specialized types of skills. Um, and my hope is that we leverage artificial intelligence appropriately in order to, um, in a sense, demystify some of these tasks. I think every organization uses the term unsilo at least 18 times a week. Um, so my, my hope is that some of these tasks will end up unsiloing some of these functions, mm -hmm. uh, bringing in cross-functional work. Um, in the work that I'm doing in ethical AI, a big narrative we have is how we need multiple stakeholder collaboration. Um, and my hope is these are the kinds of tools that enable multi-stakeholder collaboration by simply making one person's job or some one person's output understandable to the next person uh, via, you know, the, the sort of more mediated communication. Because as you mentioned, like now there's time freed up maybe to have that more in-depth mm -hmm. and rather than say, hey, I have 18 things to go back to. Uh, and frankly, most of it's, you know, some something that could have been automated. Um, so there's a lot of value to this also in business from uh, in almost um, thought thought driven and intellectual perspective of you know, growing the capabilities of knowledge generation within your org. Business leaders everywhere are looking at digital transformation, the future of work through a new, new lens. And if they're not, I mean, frankly, they, they need to be, but who, who do they talk to? Um, and also what are the key steps implementing intelligent automation? What, is it, what does it mean to, you know, as an organization, implement inte intelligent automation uh, organization-wide? So we see it both ways um, between, you know, from customers who've implemented it. We've seen customers come to us with a pain point where a certain process is not working as seamlessly as it should or is taking too long or is too expensive. And we're looking at automation in order to you, you clean or streamline that process so that they can provide a better product and service. And in other cases, we see it, it as starting from the top, you know, where it is a mandate really to get more competitive, to bring more products and services to the market. I mean, think about it. If you were a bank um, and you were to be competitive in the market and you could not process your mortgages in, say, 24 to 48 hours because all the other banks were doing it, you're really now at the bottom of the pile of banks. Um, and so to stay competitive and to really serve your customers better with the best products and services that you can offer, you want to bring these efficiencies into your organization. And digitization and automation are one of those uh, inherent catalyst technologies, as I call them, that will enable you to do it across everything, whether it's customer service, whether it's a new product, uh, whether it's to reach customers you've never reached before um, and to serve them faster, easier, um, you know, uh, in a more uh, customer centric fashion to have that touch point, to have the human connection, really, so that you want to automate everything that can be automated so that you can concentrate on your customer. I guess if I were to summarize what you've said, essentially a good starting point is to think through where are your issues today, where are your blockers, where's the friction and how can that be automated as that's kind of the low hanging fruit. And then sort of the plus one and the next step is great. Now that we have optimized our current systems, how can we make them even better? What are the new, the new opportunities that are open to me as an organization, as an organizational leader uh, that's enabled by automation anywhere, um, you know, in, in any of your products, but especially, you know, RE and the use of artificial intelligence in, in some of this process automation. Correct. And no matter which way you start, uh, the cool uh, thing I think about this from a business point of view is you can leverage it bottoms up or top down. Um, and that's what's cool. You know, no one starting point is right or wrong. It's just what's the need of the hour and how do we get there fast? And then how do we amplify it? How do we expand it? And how do we make sure that all our systems and processes, all our employees are empowered to use these technologies. Uh, and what I love in, in contrast to some of the techno solutionism that we see, what you're saying is that it is enabling human beings to do what they do better. It is not meant to quote disrupt, it is not meant to quote replace. Um, it is actually meant to help you do what you're doing and you know have it be more enjoyable, more efficient, uh, um, and open up new opportunities. So that's really fabulous. I and mean, this has been 
really great. Um, and we, we both share a, a mutual love of the concept of ethics, artificial intelligence, but also things like diversity and inclusion. And these are huge drivers and, and key to success in the future of work and particularly in the future of work in an artificially intelligent world. Um, so I really appreciate your insights, Neeti, and I look forward to what's next. Absolutely. We'll keep the conversation going. Uh, you know, we have long strides to go, uh, long ways to go, I guess, and big strides to take, and we will do so. Uh, but it'll be fun. Good, good next 10 years to see what technology can bring to the world. Absolutely. And congratulations on your, on your new product launch. And I'm really looking forward to see all the great things coming out of Automation Anywhere. Thank you. Likewise, Roman.